Please be sure to understand how inferences and inference locking works before trying this example, as we won't be detailing every step. Also, keep in mind that you will learn some useful tips for creating roofs, but the primary purpose of this video is to practice inference locking, so we are not covering all the techniques you might want to know when creating roofs. To start, we drew the base of the house. Exact dimensions are not important for this practice example. With the basic mass in place, navigate to this edge and draw a line up from this midpoint in the blue direction and connect it down to the corners. Erase the center edge and push pull it back. To create the next roof form, start a line from this corner and hover over the edge of the first roof form to find a direction that is parallel. This is what we want to lock. Hold the shift key to lock that edge. Now it's tricky to reference the back surface, so orbit around, start your edge again, find the parallel direction, and lock it with the shift key. Then finish by clicking on the reference surface. Use push-pull and the eraser to finish and clean up this geometry. Now let's focus on the center roof. Draw an edge to split this surface, and then an edge from midpoint to midpoint. Pull that edge up in the blue direction with the Move tool. Now let's connect our separate roof forms. With nothing selected, I can use the Move tool to select and move this endpoint. However, it's snapping to anywhere on that surface. So let's move it in line with the ridge and lock that direction. With the movement locked by hovering anywhere over the large surface, the edge snaps exactly where the surfaces should meet. Click to finish. Split this back surface and start moving this endpoint. We want to move in the green direction, so we could press the left arrow key to lock that direction and hover over this lower surface to align them. Erase the unnecessary edge. Orbiting around to the far side, Split the surface and angle the large roof. Now draw an edge from this midpoint and lock the blue direction. Hovering around various entities shows the many inferences we could reference, and we want to align it to this angled surface we just created. Finish the ridge line by drawing and locking an edge in the red direction, and draw a few connecting edges to complete this form. Use the eraser to clean up. Now this basic roof form is done. Let's add an addition to this house. We might create some odd roof forms, but again, the point is to practice inferencing. So let's try two different approaches for this addition. After pulling this new roof up and across, let's move this endpoint and lock the green direction to align it with the previous roof. Now to resolve these two roofs, let's use inference locking and draw a few intersecting edges. Start by hovering over and locking to the previous surface, then start the line from this intersecting point, referencing the new ridge line to complete the edge. While still locked to the previous surface, we can finish the far edge and with a little cleanup we can merge these surfaces. To show another approach, let's undo a few steps and merge these roofs again. This time, start drawing from this ridge point and lock to the ridge line or the green direction. With this lock, we can infer to the intersecting surface for the correct point in space to draw to. Now, release the inference lock and lock to our new roof surface, inferring to this ridge line to complete this line. One more line and this surface is done. Orbit to the other side and follow these steps again. Lock this edge and reference this surface. Now lock this surface and reference this edge. Then clean up the geometry. 
Hopefully you can see the power of inference locking at this point. A reminder if you're new to inference locking. New users often let go of the shift key before finishing their move or line. Remember to keep holding the shift key down until your line or move is done. Now to finish this example, let's create a few simple dormers. I'll use simple inferencing to draw the basic shape and create the rest of the form using inference locking. Draw this line in the red direction, lock it, and reference the roof surface. Now we can hover over this point to get an inference to that point, and lock that inference, then reference the roof surface. Now complete this dormer with a few more edges and a simple red inference lock on the other side. I will select this dormer with a left to right selection window and turn this into a component. If you aren't familiar with components, you should definitely learn about them soon. We'll adjust the position of this dormer and make a quick copy and array. Again, if you're not familiar with arrays in SketchUp, we have a video on that topic as well. Now I'm going to copy this dormer, Command or Control C on your keyboard, and paste it on the opposite side, somewhere far in the corner where it should not be. With the dormer selected, I will start moving by this point, which is important, so be sure to move by this corner point and then lock your movement to this roof surface. With this surface locked, if we hover over the ridge line of the dormers on the far side, watch how the new dormer lines up perfectly across. Place the first dormer, then we can copy from that same point, lock the green direction, and infer across to place additional dormers. So that wraps up this example. We can't emphasize enough how important inferences and inference locking is in SketchUp. It may take a bit of practice to master, but will quickly become one of the most powerful tools in your SketchUp arsenal.